Welcome to the NEPA Scene Podcast. We're coming to you live from Cole Creative in downtown Wilkes-Barre. I'm Rich Howells. I'm the founder and editor of NEPA Scene. Brittany, you go. Hi, uh, my name is Brittany Boot, and I'm the owner of Boot Photography Studio. And I am John Popko from Rock 107 ESPN Radio and Alt 921, and uh, I am the Saturday night host of Alt Natives on Alt 921. We're here tonight with uh, Scranton artist, muralist, teacher, Electric City Escape, and uh, Nap Designs uh, co-owner Ryan Nap. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. I'm pretty pumped about this. <laughs> so we're going to talk about uh, his uh, current and upcoming uh, mural projects in Scranton, uh, the importance of art in Scranton and northeastern Pennsylvania, uh, making a living as an artist, uh, creating and running an escape room, which I think is an interesting topic in itself, and much more. So uh, please join our conversation. Uh, if you want to know anything uh, about Ryan here, if you want to uh, follow up on any questions that we ask or anything like that, if you want to ask us anything, uh, leave those down in the comments, and uh, we'll get to those uh, later on in the show. And uh, f But first, uh, we, uh, we have some beer to drink. We have three IPAs. Oh. Oh, my face. Nice. <laughs> All right. And I so forgot my water. <laughs> this might be the best show I've ever been on. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you drink, right? Yeah. I've been on a couple of shows. Yeah, I've been on WBRE, PA Live. PA Live doesn't yeah. give you booze. No, no never. They should, because PA Live is so nerve-wracking to do. It, it's right? intense, but it, I like this. This is a nice, uh, fun time here. <laughs> We're a little more laid back here, all right, I guess all you right. would say. So Beer Boys in uh, Wilkes-Barre on North Washington Street is one of our sponsors, and they give us beer to drink every week out of these cool crowlers, which is like uh, 32 ounces of, of beer. And uh, this week we have the a Funk Silent Disco IPA, a Funk Citrus IPA. So those are by Funk Brewing, I guess. Yeah, and then the last one is Two Roads Little Heaven IPA. Okay. So... What do we want to start with? I don't know. They're all IPAs. How, how so about, they're all one. funky. Yeah, how about uh, the high one? All right. The Funk Citrus IPA at 7%. Oh, okay. Yeah, the other ones are lower? Yes. Now, so. Beer Boys has uh, 72 beers on tap. 72. 72 beers on tap. <laughs> uh, sure many that's... from Pennsylvania breweries, okay. uh, so they, they support local just like we do. Uh, we also, uh, while we're pouring those out, we want to give a shout out to one of our other sponsors, uh, The Keys in downtown Scranton. Pass that around. Uh, the, uh, their open mic is on Thursday uh, with select uh, $3 pints, uh, boneless wings, and gourmet grilled cheese, which uh, you have not had grilled cheese until you've had grilled cheese at The Keys. Uh, First Friday is already here uh, this Friday. So uh, go check it out. And uh, Saturday is TBA. We don't know yet, but the, they always pick uh, good bands to play. So I'm sure if you head there Saturday night, you'll, uh, you'll find some good local music. Uh, the FM Kirby Center is also a sponsor. Uh, tonight is uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Uh, Jennifer Nettles is on November 30th. Uh, Metallica, the uh, Metallica Tribute Band uh, Battery is on December 1st. Uh, 98.5 Carezy's Let It Show is on December 7th. Uh, Keller Williams is on December 8th, uh, which if you've never seen Keller Williams, uh, he's, uh, he's played a lot of local uh, festivals up at Montage. Uh, really, really talented guy. Uh, really fun to watch. Uh, and trap singer uh, Chris Taylor Brown is uh, playing acoustic on uh, December 15th. We also want to shout out to uh, Loyalty Barbershop and Shave Parlor. Uh, they have locations in Scranton, Archibald, and they just opened a new shop in Wilkes-Barre on South Main Street, uh, where the old uh, Cafe Metro used to be. So, uh, what do we think of this? Book this your moment? appointments now, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus. You have to book way in advance. Yeah. Like, no matter which <laughs> well, shop the, you go it's to. It's the holiday season. That's the thing. Oh, that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So. I love this. This, this is, is pretty good. This is really citrusy. For an IPA. Yeah, I yeah. did. <laughs> this is the, uh, it, it really hides the hoppiness part of it. Because mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people don't like the IPAs because they're, they're very hoppy and very hop forward. But uh, yeah. I like the hoppy. The citrus, I think, Do you? definitely smooths that out a little bit. I don't mind it. I, I don't. I, there's not really a style I, I dislike. I know yeah. you guys don't like the sours. but I just can't do the sour, and I can't do the beer that tastes like soy sauce. 
There's a beer that tastes like The soy ginger sauce. beer? No, like very, sometimes very dark stouts to me taste like soy sauce. Or the coffee. I, can see I can't drink the coffee beers. I love the no, coffee you know, beers. I am not a coffee beer guy. Mm-hmm. Guys. Chocolate beers I like. Mm-hmm. It's a good thing we, we didn't have those this week then. Because usually we have like a darker beer or something to, to try. But we all went with IPAs this week. Yep. <clears throat> so. And what was the name of this beer again? This is the Funk Citrus IPA. Funky Citrus. Funk <laughs> Citrus. I feel like you should hear like Funk Town, Uptown Funk when you open the can. <laughs> mm-hmm. That'd be cool. That would, <laughs> that would be, be really cool. cool. Musical like cans. That's, yeah. that's the next big bastion. The decor. Oh, oh nice. it's, yeah, it's, it's fall time in the uh, the studio. <laughs> I like the glittery. I hate glitter. I don't, this doesn't look today. like the stuff that comes off on I was going to take a picture of it and post it on your, <laughs> comment it on your status. I do. It's, it's, yeah. uh. My wife loves glitter. It's the, like the it herpes too. of the craft world. Yeah. It is. <laughs> hey, I'm an art teacher. I use yeah. glitter all the time. No color. If my kids see this, they're going to freak out and say something totally different there. Ay, ay, ay. Oh. Well, it is pretty if, much a pain in the butt, though, because it, it gets everywhere. If you think that's controversial, wait till we have a few more of these. <laughs> then, then, we'll, we'll, then we'll really say some shit like we did last week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, well, let, let's let's start off. Did you uh, did you get into art to be an art teacher? Did you want to be an artist, or you know how did how did that uh, start for you? Uh, it, it's real funny because I actually started going to school. I never had art classes in high school or anything like that. Mm. I went to a small Catholic high school in Tamako, PA. And, uh, I went to college and I thought I was going to be an engineer, a uh, surveyor. And, um, I took, uh, an art class while I was in school at the time at, uh, Penn State Wilkes-Barre. And I have a little tie at Wilkes-Barre. I partied in this town for a, like a year and a half. It was a good time. Um, and, uh. I took the art class and something just triggered and my mom wouldn't let me go to school for art. So she said, all right, <laughs> you go for art teacher if you want to change majors, but that's all I'm going to let you. So I decided to go right. to art teacher. I think it was like the best thing for me. It, it challenged me a whole different way. Uh, and at the same time, I was still practicing, trying to create my craft, uh, learn something. And then I got real lucky while I was in school at Penn State, Maine, where I met a woman named Anita Shapolsky. She owns a large art foundation, Jim Thorpe, PA, mm. and she uh, collected hundreds of paintings of second generation abstract expressionists. And uh, some names is um, uh, oh, uh, Ernest Briggs, and then, uh, uh, oh, the names are slipping my brain right now. Um, but they all, Ernest Briggs actually studied her Clifford Stills. A lot of his paintings look like Clifford Stills, if you're familiar with him at all. Mm. Big jagged the lines with large paintings, lots of uh, color. And um, I was able to uh, go to her gallery in New York. And for two years, I was up in New York at, once a month, just running around like completely free, going to wherever art function I can go to. And she was uh, gave me passes and I learned a whole lot about abstract expressionism. Mm-hmm. And then as I finished my undergrad, I really wanted to go and focus on painting, and that's where I ended up going to Marywood University, uh, got a uh, master's in fine art, and then uh, right as I was graduating Marywood, I didn't think Scranton, U- Scranton School District was hiring, but I got hired to be an art teacher. Hmm. And uh, uh, from that point, I've been in Scranton ever since. Those, those jobs are tough to come by, so you, oh, you came in at the right time. Oh, and I, I have no idea what's going on up at Scranton. <laughs> if, you, if you want to start a conversation with that, <laughs> that's a whole that's a whole other piece. Um, yeah. uh, and uh, it, it's a tough situation right now, and Scranton's on an upswing. Wilkes-Barre's on an upswing. All Northeast PA is on an upswing right now. And it's really fun to see the, a lot of people pushing other cultures and whatnot Um embracing other cultures with uh, the different food festivals and whatnot. Uh, and Scranton School District just has this little black mark against what's going on right now. And it's kind of holding back, I think, the city. But if, if those people in the administration building and the teachers all cooperate to come up with a, a good solution, the I think the arts will even get stronger within our community. Um, and as long as they keep focusing on growing the arts with our youth, 
we'll actually see more artists coming out, more people, um, a lot more students getting more creative problem solvers. That's the biggest part of having art in a school is not to teach how to paint something or draw something. It's how to teach children how to problem solve in a whole different method. And that's, that's the key to uh, a music teacher, a gym teacher, uh, an art teacher, or a librarian. Those four are our specials in Scranton School District, and those uh, people all teach children different ways to problem solve. And that's what's so key about uh, those teachers and what I like to do on my daily basis when I go to school. Yeah, I get paid to color with crayon, and my biggest problem is getting the <laughs> crayon from underneath my nails from picking the wrapper bag. But uh, other than that, it, it, it's a really satisfying job when you see a kid come up to you and it's like, how's this, Mr. Nat? And I'm like, that's pretty good. And it's honestly pretty good. And it's like, okay, I'm going to take that and go hide that someplace and, and steal an idea from it. But I wish I could do that. But uh, there's – there's if, if – um, a lot more people were able to understand quality and and see more art, experience more art, get more culture, listen to different music, whatnot. You you could see a renaissance take place in Northeast PA. But there's still a lot of people um, that don't go out to go get those experiences or just don't have those opportunities uh, in our area. And uh, with our mural arts, we can give those opportunities free to the public, out in the walls, um, beautifying uh, low-income pro uh, uh, properties, uh, low-income developments, or, or just city centers where um, tourism needs to build. And uh, that's why we're really trying to push for these murals. And hopefully the murals will be a, a jump start for more um, public art, uh, sculptures, whatnot, and seeing investment of uh, uh, the, the more wealthier affluent people from our area investing back into our communities to beautify our community, to show pride in our community. And I think more people would see that from outside our area mm -hmm. to really say, I want to move here. I want to be a part of this. I want to grow this area. And I think it'd be really good. And Amazon was up for grabs moving to one of these areas. Yeah, I, I, think Nepa, I think Nepa has like one of the best opportunities for them to come in and really actually mold, mold the area how they want it. But it's all about uh, being a doer. And it's, it's tough right. to be a doer in Northeast PA. Well, uh, do you, uh, what, what do you think is the, the biggest things holding us back in terms of uh, you know, being better and, get, and, and projecting a better image? Um, I think one is communication. Um, and, and, uh, also le getting the message out. Like, um, I watched, I watched Nipa scene a couple times and it's hard to sit down and watch every episode or catch every single thing that goes on Facebook. Um, there's just so much. yeah, there's so much you're inundated by so much information. There's artists in the, in cities right now are just making artwork based on, how we're inundated by information and how we're all slowly uh we can't communicate to each other because we are just being boggled down with other information um it really affects your your um social and emotional uh feelings no matter what you go look at on a a uh, website i just watched a video of a red bull guy jumping into a plane after base jumping and like, did I really need to watch that? But it was like cool and <laughs> exhilarating to me. So I had to watch it. So emotionally, it almost gave me a, a rise a little bit that I wanted to see it. But then you go on and you see other things and it could change your emotions uh, very quickly. Uh, everything you experience from a single painting on a wall to uh, a video on Facebook uh, is going to affect you some way, whether it's for a split second or for years upon years. Um, and uh, I think uh, uh, media and social media right now is like it, it, it could be um, uh, a, a very uh, uh, um, positive tool for certain things, but it could also be a detrimental tool for different things, too, because a lot of people can get lost in it very easily. I think I think we're there, there's already studies being done, but I think years from now we're going to see more of how those have affected people. I mean, I know kids 
you know, there was a there was a, a meme going around the other day, and you can take memes for what they are. You know, sometimes they're true, sometimes they're not. But uh, it, it it struck me as just really interesting. They said my kid was falling asleep, and as he was he was you know starting to dream and fall asleep, he said, uh, please 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 uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Because he watches so much YouTube videos mm -hmm. where they tell you at the end, you know, please like and subscribe and follow our channel and blah, 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 that it sunk in his brain like that's how you say goodbye. Like that's how you say goodnight. Like that's scary. That's scary when you let your kids sit in front of a screen all day, you know, and I'm sure you probably see that with these kids too. Every kid. You know, coming, coming into to your classes. So how do you take them maybe out of the digital world and into the real world and... and and want them to be passionate about something that that is physical and real. That's that's a funny question because um, uh, a lot of my classes, like we're supposed to be pushing technology, pushing technology in our classroom, and it is. I show a lot of YouTube videos. They're a hook in my classroom. Mm. Uh, five minute YouTube two video. Today we watch YouTube video on how clay is made because I'm teaching fifth grade clay and. Uh, and then afterwards, we went and start. I showed them how to do a demonstration on a wheel, and we're doing the wheel. But you could see the the kids are all very comfortable watching the video. But when it comes down to actually doing, everybody's shaking. They're they're nervous, mm -hmm. and uh, and they they uh, are always watchers as opposed to being on the other side as being performers. Right. And the that some kids are naturally right in front of the camera some kids are ne never will be comfortable but that um that breaking them out of that is is a key thing and what i like to try and do is i hook them with the tech showing them something but then we go all without technology hmm. um i have a, a student and i teach k through five so yeah. i have the little guys but right. every single one of my students a lot of them want to be youtube uh, heroes and they all they know more than me they go oh yeah this guy makes 20,000 a month I'm like how are you making 20,000 a month on YouTube I can't understand it are they getting paid by uh, beer boys for uh, sponsoring beer every month I, I have no ideas uh, but like um, this uh, this this wave and they're the generation moved from our generation Oh, I, I had Atari, Nintendo, all the video games. Sure. Now those kids are, are starting out young with VR. Right. And I actually watched my little nephew put a VR headset on the other day. And he came out and was like, oh, this is weird. Like, like and, and then he wanted more. And, and that was almost like very cool because the little guy was like pumped about it. But also scary at the same point because if he's in that headset too long, he's going to lose touch of what reality really is. Right. And uh, and they get lost in that in that realm. Mm -hmm. I find myself I, after work to just de-stress. I want to go home and play uh, Call of Duty World War Two, mm -hmm. and just get lost in that game. It's so quick and whatnot. And then it's mindless. And... Uh, then I have to go and take a break to think about something, and it's like so hard to think. Right. Uh, uh, finding the the creative juices lately has been kind of actually tough for me. Um, we're about to uh, develop a new escape room at our our, our um, uh, place in Scranton, and uh, and I've been banging my head coming up with these ideas, but they <laughs> haven't been coming out too well, and uh, I have to find a new method to get them out. Um, and finding that, that outlet to be that creative uh, person again is, is not the easiest. And find, teaching the children to f how to get that creative outlet, how to solve a problem, whether it's writing on paper or talking out, mm. is um, one of the tough things to teach. Uh, and then deal with the YouTube sensation of being on, getting paid to have weird YouTube videos where you just open up eggs the whole time and there's That's little surprises the inside. Watch. Oh my watch God, all day. it's crazy. I can't, I they can't open eggs. Uh -huh. That's they real? They open up, yeah, that's like all they watch. They They're like eggs? obsessed with it, yeah. I watch this. And it's oh, a lady talking. Oh, eggs or boxes, like so many people post. It is the number one uh, YouTube moneymaker right now is opening boxes oh like yeah i've heard, I've yeah, heard of unboxing. that before yeah but yeah, they, then the that. little kids is where it's killing it because the little kids are just going to watch it and um they open the eggs uh, one student at my school actually has um uh a form of autism and it's the only videos he watches on youtube he just watches them and mm -hmm. i still can't figure out 
why he wants that need or watches them, and that that's a that's an interesting. Um, uh, it could be an interesting the study for somebody. The woman's voice that talks through it is very relaxing, also. If you haven't noticed that, some of them have mm. voices; others don't even have some anything. Talk. They're just quiet. And they're quiet. Like, oh well, what is inside the egg? This you know, kinda, it this has kind of crazy. I was gonna ask you: Did you ever play the game The Crimson Room? Crimson Room. It's no. a game I used to play in high school. It's on some. Um, one of like pogo.com or like one of those game websites that like hosted all these games. And I was thinking like, I've never been to the escape room and I don't know much about it, but it's like a, you're in a room and you just are kind of looking for different clues. And like, what, there's is it a, a digital game? It's, yeah, it's like an online game. Oh, there's, a, there's a lot of online escape rooms. Really? Or like, uh, there's a game <laughs> called, uh, One Heart Levels. You get it on your iPhone. Um, and it's basically an escape game. You gotta like look here, find a button, connect things yeah. together, and problem solve to get to the next level. Well, our escape rooms is completely immersive. Like you would walk into a room like this, and then all of a sudden, uh, uh, Cole Creative locks the door on us, and uh, we can't get out. So we have to now go search every growler that we have for a key <laughs> yeah. to get out. Oh, is that or what it's go like? around. It is like that. And our I themes, we come. have three themes. We have one that's our private investigator office, another that's a, a coal mine, and another that's art heist. And all our uh, themes actually are based around the local tourist destinations. Coal mine with the Lackawanna Coal mm -hmm. Mine. Um, the PI office has references to Steamtown, and the art heist has to deal with the uh, Everhart Museum. So oh. we're actually trying to tie in those different right. uh, locations. And I was I was going to disclose what our next room is, but my wife told me I can't do that tonight. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. so Just do it. Just I, do it. I, I can't. I can't, <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't. I actually should have brought something. It would have been perfect for that. Can you give us a hint? Uh, it's magic. That's all mm. I can. That's all I can tell okay. you. That's all I can tell you. I want to totally come. See, we I'm should, we should all, we should I all know, do I really it. Want, I know, let's go. Now, we also have another game that's a little bit of a different escape game. It, it's escape game where you have to solve puzzles and everything, but it's for large groups, 10 to 30 people. Mm. And uh, it's called the Nipa virus. And if you don't find the cure, you get nepotized. <laughs> and uh, a lot of <laughs> people have been nepotized. no. <laughs> uh, exactly. We, we have a sign at the end. You walk Nipa in talking like Hainer normally. No. You walk out like, what's going on? <laughs> you guys. You <laughs> guys. <laughs> guys. What's going on? Yeah, it, and we have, and how it's played is everybody gets a character, and two two people are bad guys, and everybody has to figure out the bad guys. If the bad guys don't get caught, they get free stuff uh, mm. from us. And uh, it, it, it's a it's a murder mystery slash escape game, which is a, do, a like total birthday twist. parties, like people do it like in groups, like yeah. stuff like that. Uh, corporate corporate outings. Uh, we did some off location and whatnot, and we have a. a Another one coming up real soon that's going to be off location at a synagogue, which is going to be probably a, a ton of fun. Yeah, that uh, sounds like To see how that goes. The, uh, the, whole, the whole escape room thing, it seems like, took off uh, a couple of years ago. What, what made you want to get into that? Uh, I, we had no idea what it was. Me and my <laughs> wife went for a trip to uh, um, Paris and Czech Republic. Mm. And I was invited to give an artist talk at a, um, an art collective in uh, Prague. And there was a friend in Prague that I knew, and he hooked the whole deal up, and we were able to stay for free. And I talked to students from one university. And it's amazing. I thought I had to like, have a translator. They all spoke perfect English. <laughs> uh, it, it's it, Art culture in America, we all start. Need, we all need to start learning two, three languages. Yeah, we're we're yeah. so backwards oh, in that it, area. It is it's crazy. It's funny. Um, so I went to, uh, we went to Paris in the Czech Republic, and when we were in Czech Republic, a friend of us uh, uh, was actually invited us to go to the escape room. We didn't want to go at all. And then all of a sudden, we, we just said, okay, she asked us enough, let's go. Mm -hmm. And we went, and we were, like, so happy with the experience. And then I was like, oh, we got to bring this back. I researched the heck out of it, came up with the ideas, just kept running. Everything was just going really, really smooth. And then we were lucky to find the space we had because it was the Marywood Entrepreneur Launchpad. Mm. And uh, from that point on, we, we negotiated something that worked out with the building owner, started paying rent, and uh, launched our business. And we've been just trugging forward, and we just want to keep offering new things. Uh, a lot of escape rooms uh, might keep their room designs for three or four years. 
are we're about to retire one room, put a whole brand new room in, hmm. uh, and we've only been open a year and a half. So we're really trying to uh, be new and and uh, stay fresh with everybody, uh, and being a, a central location right on the square in Scranton. Um, we're looking to do, we, we have lots of opportunity and we're still trying to capitalize on those opportunities and seeing what would be the best things. Well, you guys are right in the Electric City building. Yeah. So, it, I mean, you can't get any uh, it's kind of funny. more Scranton than that. No, no, and that's what's <laughs> awesome. We actually start collecting any pictures or paintings of the Electric uh, the electric <laughs> building. If there's any artists out there uh, and you have uh, artwork that you did of the Scranton Electric Building, please contact us. Uh, we, we like to try to support the local artists and we have like 12, 12 uh, paintings, prints and pictures of the building and we want to just collect more. It's it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, just being such a historical building and, uh, and having um, such good landlord that is uh, working with us to to help us and we're about to renovate and it's just it's just all positive stuff going on right now and uh we were able to talk with our neighbor levels and uh negotiate the wall outside and he gave us the wall and and we had a, an idea for that wall the first one we went and showed him and he totally shut it down he didn't <laughs> like it at all and he didn't shut it down really his wife shut it down he she he yeah. said oh she doesn't like this at all so we was went this to draw design like too crazy. Or I, it, it was like this big, colorful design with two deer that looked like they were in like an epic fight. Mm. Like it was like it was would have been wild. it would have been really cool because uh, we were going to try and make them really look like they're floating, coming off the wall a little bit. Um, but they didn't like that idea. And when we, I got so miserable over this <laughs> that I was at a friend's house and we started like fighting. I wouldn't talk to anybody, and all of a sudden. We started talking, and uh, I called Eric Boussart, who was um, the other artist that helped do this project that we were playing together with. And uh, I go, Eric, why don't we just do Scranton? He's like, I already have the design done. He already drew it. <laughs> and I was like, all right, let's do it. And then we ended up, like, two days later starting the painting, and we, we got it done right before um, uh, first Friday in October. And it's nuts how many people have been coming by on the weekends taking pictures in front of it. I it's just it's a little mind-boggling and it's awesome that our business electric city escape is right next to it right. because i painted it and now i get to appreciate the people taking pictures of it right. it's a really cool positive feeling that's going on which is rare if you're a muralist usually you're doing it somewhere far away from where you can actually see the yeah. results of it other than maybe online mm -hmm. so that's that's pretty cool that you can actually just walk up to people and be like hey i did that <laughs> and and that's what's cool and like if we like uh, other cities have like welcome to um, Nevada or something like that and they have look like a postcard um, that's cool but like to do one that's just focused on Scranton itself and and funky uh, we mm. uh, the goal of starting this mural all these murals is actually to um, uh, get a quality that can come out of the murals uh, it's not just about painting a whole bunch of things on the walls it's about trying to curate the best artwork on the walls. Because if we have the best artwork on the walls, we're gonna have people coming in from out of town to see the murals. Right. Uh, and I have a, a artist, his name is um, uh, uh, Zach Young. He created Trolley Bot, like a transformer <laughs> that's a trolley. And we wanna paint on this one building, like four stories tall. Oh, it man. would look awesome. Mm -hmm. it, it, would, like, <laughs> and it has like this eye for like the light of the trolley and it just stares down at you. Oh, and awesome. we want to do this 3D illusion so it actually looks like he's standing like in this alley. <laughs> uh, and we're just waiting to make sure we get the wall. And the, hopefully by spring, uh, beginning of spring, we'll have a bunch of walls lined up that we could do a blitz of Scranton to see how it really works out. And then hopefully we go cool. from there. <laughs> So Scranton's our, our home base for starting this, and then we hope to branch out from there and see what else like we can to do. Like Wilkes-Barre. Wilkes-Barre <laughs> would be good. You guys have a really awesome mural right by uh, the Wilkes-Barre Rock Climbing Gym, back in that alleyway, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right by the parking lot. That's a, 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 a fairly famous guy, I think, that did that, that traveled around. Really? Yeah, and then I think... Uh, with the guy with the googly eyes was from Wilkes-Barre. 
Remember yeah, the googly remember eyes, the googly eyes guy, yeah. I don't know if he got arrested. I don't know. I, I, I hope. I hope not. I I I, I, I hope he's like did. Banksy and nobody ever. Gets I it. I don't know. I heard. Uh, <laughs> I heard he his, his girlfriend dimed him out or something. But I, I don't uh, know the whole story. But I like that was fun. That was really that fun. That was cool. The googly eyes everywhere was fun. Your people are like, what the heck is that? And it, it just it it really touched the. It got a lot of people mad, but at the same time, it got a lot of people happy when you saw these googly eyes driving up 81, and you're like, what the heck is that? But it was, it, it, you smiled for a second, and that's what that's what uh, art can do if it's done appropriately with, with the right means. And uh, oh, we need some more street art and some rebels in the communities, but we also need to get some people to follow the system and, and get some really quality stuff done and open the doors for these artists that are hiding in places. We have big time artists that are from this area that aren't painting in our area, they're painting other places that if we just were able to get them some funding, they'll come here and throw up major walls sure. and some major stuff that would be just out of this world. And just letting the artists do it, not, not holding them back and saying, oh, you need to paint a, 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 a train on this building or a, uh, a mural of every famous person from this area on the wall. No, you just let the artist mm -hmm. run Agreed, with their yeah. run with their style. Because if you don't let them run with their style, it's going to be a fail. You just got to let them go out with it. And uh, I think we could see amazing stuff come out of this area, which would be really cool. I think I think people are are uh, you're right. I think they're too. They have an idea in their mind of what they think should be there. Uh, whereas I think the, the artists are going to be more true to their style. and They're going to come up with something a little more creative. I mean, some of the stuff that uh, was down by the trail there mm -hmm. uh, was 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 pretty impressive. Uh, and you were involved in that as well. Yes, uh, LHVA approached me uh, when Natalie Gebb was uh, the president at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, she she was pushing me, pushing me for like a year to try to get this mural murals going. And to do murals, it's not a short process. It's not something we could turn around real quick. That's why we have to plan way ahead of time um, because we have to get money. We have to uh, get the artists. We have to get the ideas secured before we go. And uh, I actually partnered uh, and put all call out to Marywood students. And I had several meetings with Marywood students and the Marywood students came up with the ideas for the walls. Um, Eric Boussart, uh, and uh, made the light bulb that's pretty famous along that trail. Yeah. Um, and then he was just getting into painting large stuff at the time. And now I actually feel like he, he actually just finished a mural over on West Side all by himself. Mm. And um, on uh, uh, West Side New Community Center uh, that's on uh, Washburn, I think. Um, and uh, Eric, Eric's a, a future talent that... Uh, it just needs needs some support. Um, the, and some of these younger artists, if we give them some support, they get a little bit of money. Where's that money going to go? It's going to go right back into our community. It's not going to go outside of this community. Right. So if we support local artists, that that's not going to go someplace else. It's going to stay here, which I think if some other people start to actually think about, we can actually say, okay, let's fund these big projects and, and make cool things. Um, uh, but Eric was on that project, and then several other students from Marywood University's uh, art program, and all the kids volunteered their time to do it, and we tackled each little area at a time, and, and I just helped to facilitate them to get it done, uh, uh, get the paint to where we need it, uh, help uh, figure out sizing and, and, and getting uh, shapes done, and it went really well. It was a lot of work, but I think the project was a success, and that was, that was cheap. That was cheap. The mural on the side of levels uh, was, uh, I, I donated all my time and materials and um, I uh, funded Eric's time uh, through Electric City Escape. Uh, we paid for that. And then uh, if we want to do some larger murals, it, it's, it's some, it's some uh, money to do some stuff. Uh, a lot of people don't think it's easy to paint something, but it's the wall prep that's the, some of the times the more expensive thing. I, I was going to say, you know, there's probably challenges and things that people aren't thinking about when they see, you know, they see the finished product, you know, uh, or, or when it comes to actually tackling it and doing it. You talk about some of the, the challenges of, of trying to put something like that together and then finding the funding for it and things like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, with the, the bridges for the LHVA trail, those bridges are painted by PennDOT. That's all really good paint. So we could just go right up over that. 
But like we we're looking at some other uh, walls um, and one area I really want to tackle. And uh, if anybody is watching or pass this on to anybody who's uh, Olive Street from Scranton High to um, uh, uh, um, Kapaus, mm -hmm. that little corridor. And there's the okay. bridge there. It, 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 hundreds of kids walk through there every day. Mm -hmm. And it looks a mess. I would love to get some funding and just bring a whole bunch of artists in and we tackle that whole area. And we put paint funky colors, patterns, just simple stuff everywhere. And I think that right there would be a huge change for the city uh, right away. Because then you would have those students coming from that high school seeing positivity as opposed to going home and seeing negativity, negativity every day. Sure. And if we bring more positive to our youth, maybe more of our youth would stay here as opposed to trying to move out of the area right away. Um, because that's... Uh, the more people who we can uh, support at a younger age, the more we can actually probably squeeze out of or find more doers to do things. And there's some people really doing younger people right now that are doing a lot that uh, are much younger than me, which is, is very cool. And I, I hope uh, people just keep doing and communicating and reaching out to each other and then we could connect and and make things happen. That's like uh, that's that's the biggest uh, biggest uh, thing that needs to happen. Even just seeing those types of things might inspire somebody, or might say, "Hey, this this town isn't as you know lame or or stupid as I think it is." Exactly. You know, a lot of kids have that attitude. Exactly. Know? Everybody and hates their hometown until they they leave it and then realize, "Ah, eh, maybe it wasn't so bad." You know. There's a lot of people that leave this area and then they come back and they're like. Man, I really miss this area. <laughs> they all and, come and, back. And, yeah, <laughs> they, they all, all come, come back. back. Yeah. And know it's uh, know it's beautiful about this area. This area is so so uh, family oriented, mm -hmm. and I think that's one thing that is so positive to the to the area. And it's really kind of easy living. You could be in a city where there's lots of things to do, or you could go right out into the country and get out of town in 15 minutes. Right. It, it's a it's a very cool little area like that and um uh and it's funny like i'm down in wilkes -Barre tonight i don't come to wilkes -Barre too often <laughs> but i actually am liking I, i've been to wilkes -Barre twice uh this month and I, I don't know maybe i'll be down here more often <laughs> that's a whole nother like uh hurdle to, to make because you go people from scranton don't go to wilkes -Barre, people from wilkes -Barre don't go to scranton sure. um and some people might argue me on that but um that's the truth uh, it, it, it's the truth, and it's just uh, 81. Maybe they need to put another road in on the other side over by Kaiser that's more high speed to get up and down <laughs> from the cities, and maybe the traffic will stop a little bit. But who knows? Uh, but it, it's uh, it's everybody has their busy life, um, and everybody's running around dealing with all the media stuff online, driving, getting to place from here to there since we're such a driving oriented community. Uh, so just throw something up on a wall that people drive by and say, that's, that's pretty beautiful. Mm. That that's a, that's a good positive direction. And I think that's this the whole area. you want to leave on people, um, when they're entering an area or passing through an area. That's why I always say with the square here, if they're, was still the same culture that we have here and like all the different walks of life but if there was some music playing mm -hmm. and you're driving around you might think like oh that's cool but like there's still like a couple <clears throat> drug addicts around or like a homeless person but if you hear the music it leaves a different impression on you it doesn't it doesn't disguise you know any of the realities of our environment or the situation or our area is in but it leaves a different impression on you as opposed to not having art or not having music or not having all these beautiful things to see. It just gives it more of a comforting thing. And I think that that's what you want people to leave people with when they're entering your community or just passing and it's through. entering the community. Because it's not, I drove around Square. It's awesome right here at the Square. But getting into the Square, you have a, a, a culture that you're seeing too. Mm -hmm. So it's from entrance to exit right. that you need to have uh, all that positive messages and stuff. And that's why you, we could do another mural right downtown in the square in Scranton at the, near the courthouse. But I, I actually think we'll be more positive if we actually focus on the little communities outside of the center city as well as focusing on the center city. Mm. Because we need to tie 
uh, there's so many people in Scranton that just don't want to go downtown. And I'm like, why is that? I'm downtown every night. But it's all about a parking issue. And we're such or we're such driving oriented in North P, in Northeast PA to get anywhere. Um, so it, it's a. Uh, I, I don't think uh, there's easy answer to it. Go park in a parking garage, right. but people also don't want to take the extra step, and and that's uh, right. There, it's it's a it's a, a thinking that maybe needs to change, or or could be questioned, um, or uh, somehow fixed. I don't know how it could be fixed, but or it's just a reality that we we deal with, and all we can do is live with this reality and then just keep adding to what's around it to better that reality. Because mm -hmm. um, you go to New York City, you've got music playing on the street, but you also got uh, somebody bumming with a sign on the side of, right by the corner too. It does change your personality. But, yeah. but should we really distract, just be not looking at that person too? Yeah, like so not we have to embrace the two. We have to embrace the two yeah. realities. Sure. Like not to be a distraction, but just to give yourself or give people that a, a different sense of comfort instead of like just generally being like <clears throat> ugh or you know what I mean like those sounds that people make like oh or ugh you know what I mean makes <laughs> yeah, a big yeah, difference yeah, yeah, and yeah. the only thing you need to really change that sound is a saxophone mm -hmm. or and that's as simple as it is and it's not taking away from the realities of the negative um now here's a thought for you and I, this is this is crazy who's been in Nashville I have not you have not no in Nashville uh, and, I, and not all the people watching know Levels Bar. Every bar is like Levels. It's like three stories, four stories big. Mm -hmm. Every bar has music on every floor. None of those musicians are paid. They all just uh, panhandle. So mm -hmm. when they're in there, the only money they make is the money that they're given by the patrons in the, in the space, which is a whole different perspective. But they're playing in a warm place as opposed to outside. Right. And Nashville is like Music City. Everybody right. goes there to play music to try to be famous. But And we don't have that here. But it just like it's a whole different thought. And I, I, don't, I don't know if it's ever doable here. But uh, I think it may work for a month promoting it. But then it would, people would stop giving money. I've seen um, restaurants now that uh, will will have a, a music tip, mm -hmm. you know, and just as you would tip your your waiter, or your waitress, or whatever else, uh, you know, there's a line right on the receipt that that you know says you can tip your musicians whatever you want. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that an, yet. That's, that's cool. an interesting thing too. That, that's you know? very cool. I, I haven't seen it locally yet, but no. you know, it, it could happen. That would be the same as like. A uh, me painting a mural and I have a tip hat out and, and <laughs> right. I get tips for painting the mural and, sure. and I probably will be there longer than the musician but uh, <laughs> uh, that, that's like the same concept and that's why it could be a, a, it's it's a weird idea that happens down there it's a whole yeah. different mentality different way of thinking there's just so many more people too but it, it's how how it works and that's how it's worked for years so it's kind of like, I just threw that out there. For better or uh, worse. Yeah, I, 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 I don't even know where I was going right with And there's with always it, a kind of an influx of people, though, in Nashville, too. So there are mm -hmm. always new people there mm -hmm. every week or every month or so because of people like tourists. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So in a community where you don't really have that, <clears throat> it's going to be the same people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah. we're the kind of community, like, people go where they go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? So it's going to be the same people. building tourism <clears throat> in our area is something that... I think is very doable, but then there's there's issues of how our area is laid out now because I right. think it was much dual. I think somebody could have made this area the the top area to visit in all of Pennsylvania uh, 30, 40 years ago, um, but the, the the area splits commerce, put stuff here or there, yeah. and it <laughs> split all the places up as opposed to making one central location. Right, and I think that's kind of a uh, something that kind of hurts our area because we're split up too far. But once the arena like was built up, like where like all of the kind of like the chain and the mall is, yeah. I guess the mall initially would have really been the kind of start of that. But once the arena went up there, then all the business went to that area. Allentown mm -hmm. is awesome right now, and they're the I think it's the Allentown Predators, or I think it's the was it Phantoms. the Phantoms play right downtown. 
Mm-hmm. It is so cool downtown See, Allentown cool right now. It is was oh, right downtown. Oh, it would be awesome. And then the baseball stadium was downtown Scranton, and then you wouldn't have like Scranton Wilkesboro Penguins. It would be Wilkesboro yeah. Penguins, Scranton R- Rail Riders. Yeah. Like, we don't need to split the two together. I think it would have been good to do one and the other. But but uh, yeah. we're not politicians. We're all artists, uh, uh, connoisseurs of alcohol and beer. <laughs> That's all I am. And think. <laughs> <laughs> Speak, and, and, and there's no solving up. the problems now. <laughs> All we can do is work with our realities and, and see what we can do. And, and things and communicating, talking these things out is the only way to like uh, possibly affect change or, yeah. or grow something. Which, what was this beer that we're drinking? Yeah, now? this one's different. It was really good. It was, uh, that was the Funk Silent Disco. We, didn't we have that one? We had that one on the, uh, the Satellite Ranch podcast because we were talking about uh, silent discos. Did I don't we? Know which one. Yeah, I, I, I think around that time we had we had that one before. I like the first. That one. that one was quite good. I, I like the citrus one a little bit more. Yeah, but this one was good too. What's yeah, the citrus one? one really high hid the IPA taste. This one you really like taste the IPA. Oh yeah, yeah. The hops are really forward in that one. Yeah. This is Two Roads Little Heaven IPA. Okay. So this one's different different brewer than the last two. Yes. I was uh, uh, in. Uh, Portland, Oregon once, and there's this place called McMenamin's, and McMenamin's is this uh, brewery mm. that has a theater, has game rooms, mm. and it was in this old school, and you, like, could do whatever you want in the school. It was cool as can be, and um, uh, I feel like there's a swing for more breweries in Northeast PA right now, which is... Oh, yeah, there's which, more popping up all oh, the time. Oh, which is really cool. And now I see the distiller, <clears throat> distilleries, like um, the one guy I saw in the paper down in Nanakoke. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. He's doing vodka. I can't remember the name. Um, yeah. But I think that that's a huge plus to our area. There's a lot of newer businesses coming up. Like, uh, I'm an alternative business. You would never expect us to be, like, doing well. But what, what's really working for us is that we are a tourist destination. When people look up Scranton, oh, what can we do? Let's go do the escape room. It's fun, exciting, it's an adventure. Um, and then what's great is we tie it into the tourist uh, locations. So you come do some exciting thing where you got to not blow up from a bomb or not suffocate in a mine and then go actually do the real mine tour. And it's, like, <laughs> it's cool to try and build on that tourism and try to promote people from outside area we've been getting a lot of new yorkers um coming in from the city staying in the poconos coming all the way to us which has been like a a a really cool and then they get to scram whoa this city's so cool and i didn't know how many people use scranton wilkesbury as a a a meeting spot between the new england's and uh like virginia that Mm -hmm. is south they meet Uh, here a lot because of 81 and uh, 380 and 84 are all right here, so it's like convenient for a lot of people. We we met a lot of people that just pass through, do our escape room, and then get back on the road and, and drive wherever they want, which is like a, a pretty cool thing. And now some more people are staying the night as opposed to just stopping at our place and going. And uh, we hope uh, we hope we could do that, and we hope some other things can happen in either down, downtown Scranton at least for us right now, to keep tourism coming. Uh, both cities have such awesome architecture from such a long sure. time ago. And uh, it's uh, and the people who run the historical societies, I think, really do a really good job uh, maintaining the history and whatnot. And I think, uh, I, I, I believe there there is a lot of positive history here. And I think the Roaring Twenties was awesome. There was just an article in the paper about how Scranton was like this bustling town. It's a jazz almost, town. I know. And there, I don't think like there's... the best jazz players around that would Scranton be, to play. That would be awesome if Scranton became a, a, like the jazz town again or, 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 or something like that. And I think there's like a lot of punk music in Wilkes-Barre. Mm-hmm. I, I, I knew a bunch of people playing punk, but I, I'm so out of the music scene. I'm like... I still just go home. And listen a lot of the, to the, the bands that grew up in the metro are now, you know, huge. They're they're all moved to Philly. You know, they're 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 blowing up on different labels and things like that. So, you know, which is a lot of stuff has come out of here that people don't realize. Yeah, which is awesome, and uh, and that's that's great. We need and then uh, the theater, the theater arts. There's uh, a lot of stuff happening with that. There's some uh, some um, 
uh, actors and actresses that went and performed in England recently, mm -hmm. um, which is really cool. And they still call Scranton home, sure. which is uh, is really neat. And we actually had uh, the Christmas story was at the Cultural Center. Yeah, yeah. And uh, all the, a bunch of the actors came in and dancers came into our place. Oh, cool. And they set the all-time record in our escape room. Nice. And they were like the nicest people in the world, <laughs> world too. They yeah. were awesome. And they came out so pumped. And I had, we had to give them T-shirts right there for setting the record because nobody was coming close to it. They, like, <laughs> they beat the coal mine under 30 minutes. And mm. that's wow. the fastest time ever. Nobody's ever done that. Usually people are in there 50 minutes or more. Who, who knew uh, Ralphie would be so good at uh, Yeah, we didn't have Ralphie. We didn't have <laughs> Ralphie. We had... Uh, we had, I think, the dad was there and, and a okay. bunch of dancers. Do people not figure it out? Oh, a lot of people don't figure it out. Not it's so. not the easiest. We have it made where it's doable, but you got to just stay on task. And if you hit a wall, that's where, that's where you, you can fail. But if you keep your momentum going forward and you run into a problem and then you stop, we like, I actually like when people get out because you get like, you seriously get high. Uh, you don't need to go home do drugs or anything. Come to the escape room <laughs> and uh, and get high when you get out. And it, it's it's really positive because you're being we really challenge you with weird stuff and um, it, and it's very cool. We wish we ought, we could offer more. There's a lot of uh, our patrons that want us to have more, and we just maybe you can can't. open up another location. I don't know that that maybe maybe a possibility in the near future, <laughs> but. Uh, it's a uh, it's it's been talked, but we have to we have to figure out a couple things first. So, but cool. I think I think what you guys are doing, uh, you know, mural wise to try and you know uh, brighten up the city, I think is going to help. And something I've seen in my lifetime is uh, Scranton has kind of tried to rebrand itself as a very artistic community. I think that started with First Friday. Uh, you know, at least in my lifetime, anyway, mm -hmm. seeing that type of stuff uh, go mainstream. You know, not mm -hmm. just in uh, galleries, in in uh, you know universities and things like that, but you know, bringing it to downtown and and letting just regular people walk around and see this stuff for free, and you know, understand that it's here and that there's a lot of in interesting culture and stuff that they may have missed mm -hmm. or that they may not be exposed to otherwise. Mm -hmm. You know, I think people. Like, like, you know, my, my parents are the type that are going to go out on a Friday and Saturday night. So they're not going to see this stuff. But they would go out on a first Friday, you know, have a, have a, a sip of wine here and there and, and, you know, look at the art and appreciate that this stuff is here and that people are actually, you know, actively doing something. Mm -hmm. So seeing that on the walls and things like that, I think would help even more yeah. uh, to, to bring that out. Because it's not just something you have to go to once a month. You know, it's mm -hmm. something that you can see all the time. First Friday's really turned into a community event. Um, there's not just art anymore. There's music playing on the streets. Um, there's uh, different nonprofits doing things to raise awareness for them. Uh, we actually had all the colleges in from the Scranton area come in and do a, uh, a uh, it was a mocktail. So they made all drinks without alcohol and to help promote um, no binge drinking. Um, and it was kind of a cool event. We had a lot of kids come through and it was, it was good. And, uh, but those kind of events are, are happening too. Um, which we, First Friday is kind of still focused on art, but it's kind of gotten away. Uh, a lot of people don't know or really appreciate buying an original work of art from an artist. When you buy that, you're not just taking that home forever, but you're actually supporting that artist's living. Sure. Um, most artists that I know, I, I, I could barely buy a beer if, uh, <laughs> sometimes. Uh, they're just trying to put uh, uh, shelter over their head and, and food in their belly. Right. So, like, to go and buy a work or and you could go see something that you appreciate and buy it, that's, that's a big plus. And um, trying to... Uh, get more we actually I think need more artists to our area mm -hmm. I think there's a possibility to get more because I think there's a, a couple artists that do really well to support the arts for the area that a lot of people appreciate um, but it's not easy it's a, a disposable income you have to have disposable income income to buy a painting or something sure um, and it wasn't until me and my wife started uh, and I gotta sh do a shout out to my wife. She's she's watching. Hi, Amy. Because um, uh, I can't do what I do without her, without a doubt. Uh, but me and her started putting about 150 away a month to just buy art, 
And mm -hmm. if that we don't spend it that month, we let it roll over and then we buy something for 300 or we let it roll over another month if we don't find anything and buy something bigger. And uh, it's kind of almost become an addiction. I, we buy a lot of art, and I have a lot of art. Where do you put art. it off? I, I have, our walls are filled, and, it, it's, and now I have a rack downstairs because I make a ton of art, too. Right. And I have a problem with looking at my own paintings. I don't want to look at my own paintings. Right. Uh, because then I start critiquing them constantly and saying, oh, I should have did that or did that. And I get, like, emotionally upset with it, and then I want to put a hole in it. Um, but, but so I buy a lot of other artists artwork and those art artists can inspire me and whatnot, or I really appreciate them and want to support them. I, me and her just won a, a painting at the AFA auction, which is one of their biggest fundraisers and was a painting from uh, a collage from Pam Parsons. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's a really good collage and most of the time her artwork's really expensive and we got it at like a reasonable price. It wasn't too cheap, but it was like. Uh, three three months of savings and uh, and we were good um, and it was pretty it's pretty fun to come home with something new and then you put it on your wall and live with it for a while uh, but we have a lot of artwork and it's it's kind of kind of crazy uh, Forge Space when they were downtown now they're in Narrowsburg New York and we were buying a lot from them uh, 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 Skip is awesome uh, awesome guy and uh, his wife Lee. Uh, who run Forge Space, and now they're in Narrowsburg, New York, having a good time up there with the Low Gallery. Um, and uh, it's, it's uh, to, to support artists and buy art, um, and coming out the first Friday, like, it, it's not just going out for a glass of wine. Yeah, that's a plus, but it really should be going to look at the paintings, appreciate the paintings, and discuss buying a painting, right. um, and, and supporting the arts that way. And if you're not going to buy a painting, uh, pay a membership to be a part of AFA or, or uh, uh, see what else you can do to put in time to that community. And First Friday really kicked off in Scranton, but now wilkes Bear has, a, what, Second Saturday? Uh, or that's Thursday? Second Saturday is different. Do they have Third Thursday? Third Thursday. Is it, it's not First Friday. It's I, I believe it's Scranton Thursday. has a bigger concentration. But the problem is also with First Friday it's is it's Friday. so spread out. Third yes. Friday. Yeah. And it's Friday. tough to get everywhere. They, and, and Pittston and has a second Yeah, uh, they, they have one as well. And, uh, and I, uh, Pittston, I think, is a little bit farther Pittston ahead. Pittston is First Friday as well. Wilkes-Barre really ne is, Wilkes -Barre is, is trying to Friday. catch up on that, I think. Yeah, but with Wilkes-Barre, I think the issue is they don't, they want, they, they, they have all these really great ideas, but it's like people aren't responding to, to open them. an art right. gallery? That's a super hurdle. And I think maybe they need to talk to... I think they need to shake things up. I think they need to talk to people who have done it successfully. And right. Say, what because what have you done to do that? And, and how can we reach those people in that right. same way? Right. And having different people all the time. And right. Well. Right. And, I, and I, I think it's... A lot of it is a bit like as a media guy, I can say that, you know, a lot of these people just don't get in contact with you until it's too late. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think, Ryan, you're pretty good at, the, at, at, you know, you'll send a press release if you have something coming out. I try. You know, you try to at least get ahead of it a lot and of people that's, it's that's like, my that's my beautiful wife <coughs> at home uh she she gets a lot of i get i get stuff all the time that's like either it's the day of you know like uh, or or the day before and it's like it's too late you know by that point people have already decided what they're going to do that day or the weekend or whatever mm -hmm. and or they don't send anything at all and they just expect you to find out about it right. and it's like if i'm the media guy who my job is to find out about this stuff and let everyone else know and i don't know about it then certainly the average person does right. not know about it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big problem, too, is they're, they're just not getting the word out to people right? and reaching, and reaching the right people. Communication. Right, going back to what we said at the very beginning. Uh, and it's, it's really tough because it's uh, to do marketing or social media, it's a full-time job. Oh, uh, absolutely. I, me and Amy don't really work at the escape room anymore. We don't take – we sometimes, depending on employees, we don't uh, work there on location – most of the time, we're at home trying to figure out how we're going to do marketing and everything. <laughs> right. And right now, we're on uh, Rock 107 for... What, and starting on Monday, you'll be Monday. on Alt, Alt, Alt 9201, yeah. Yeah, on, on that. And then we're on uh, your competitor, 98.5 <laughs> KRZ. <laughs> we're on, all, we're we're on a lot of radio stations. That. But, like, it's, it's not... It's not uh, it's, for artists, it's 
to be a single artist, young artist, it's it's expensive to get on all that, those places. Absolutely. And uh, to get the word out and uh, and having a marketing plan and whatnot. Facebook's great and all, but if you don't uh, you don't have a resource to push that and. There's not enough dedicated art galleries in the area, and that's kind of the problem a little bit. Mm -hmm. And and if there is any uh, big time politicians out there, uh, Easton did this where they gave uh, tax benefits for three years to artists that would open and buy locations in Easton. Mm -hmm. I think it was Easton. I'm not 100% sure it was Lancaster or Reading. Um, and it was three years, like, uh, KOZ land where you pay no taxes. Sure. Uh, Which they give to these big companies. Why aren't they giving them to, to people who can't afford it? Exactly. And then, like, maybe you go through a rigorous process to get it, but you get three years, no taxes. Hey, that could be huge for an artist, and that's a, a big, big plus. And then these business, oh, it, these building owners, there's so many empty buildings get an artist in there for or or find your cousin or somebody that's an artist and have them open a place up for a little while and then rent it when uh rent it when uh somebody really wants to inquire on the space and get people using these spaces as opposed to leaving them empty right there's so many little buildings all over scranton wilkes are completely empty let them up for sale but then give an artist opportunity just to hang out in there or or find somebody uh, that will uh, uh, curate it. And, and if anybody's out there and knows spaces, I know like five or six people will contact me. I, I'll definitely mm -hmm. gladly uh, connect people together. I can't do everything, but it's just the communication, like getting the, the people connected and, right. uh, and being a mediator and, and taking the time to hook other people up. Uh, and that's, that's the only way I think we could really grow our, our arts community more than what it is now. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would be cool if some politicians threw us a lot of money, though. <laughs> wink, wink. Which, you know, I, I, I've noticed because... And getting the right politicians in office. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll amazing. support you. We'll vote <laughs> yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's another thing, too. It's, 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 yeah. a, it's, it's tough. And we're at, we're at a, a, a tough time where you have to either be Democrat or Republican. You can't be libertarian and, and make any progress. Uh, you you have to be one or the other and and make and follow policy and and a lot of the people who are at making policy are people who are well off or have time to do that stuff um, and and it's tough to, to be very community oriented and uh, get those get that support um, to to do these creative ideas that all these people have. Sure. And, uh, and and get stuff done. So well, I I noticed too you 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 have your hand in so many different cookie jars, so to speak. You know you, you're doing so many different things. Uh, you know one of the things we didn't mention, uh, Nat Designs uh, does interior design and things like that too. So do you think that's a key to you know if you were to give advice to a struggling artist, somebody who's trying to make money, to maybe diversify a little bit, try different things. Uh, not just stick to, to one thing and hope that that works out in the long run or something mm -hmm. like that. Do you, is that part of your success or uh, the things that you've done? You're, you're a key word, diversify. Uh, running a business, you got to diversify your income. Uh, you can't focus on one income coming in at all. You need to have multiple sources. So one source might be I have to go work at McDonald's to be an artist. And then my other source is I sell my paintings. And then another source, I go work at this restaurant. Um, you got to be willing to put the work in, um, and sometimes you have to sacrifice things. I haven't painted a painting in a year and a half, mm. um, except for that mural. And the reason is because I've taken the escape rooms to be my art. I'm designing, and uh, art's supposed to be an experience. So I've literally taken my art to a place where you physically experience Right. And that's how I'm justifying myself not making things right now. <laughs> and I'm still making stuff, and I still have a creative outlet, but it's in a whole different uh, uh, realm of thinking and whatnot, which is which is a lot of fun, um, and uh, very cool. I don't know where I was going with it. 
Oh, you can keep That's going. Good. I just wanted to uh, There's just a lot make of sure comments we, there. Yeah, I just Is want... everybody saying any, anything bad? Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> usually, our com- uh, th- thankfully, our comment section is pretty cool. Most of the people that yeah. tune in are, are, are get what we're trying to do and support uh, local arts and stuff. So we usually don't get too many people who are uh, haters. Uh, but we do have uh, uh, Hirsch, uh, who's who's been on the show before. He said uh, to t- tell you to uh, to contact AJ Jump. Uh, he's got a wall that needs art. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, he he's he's opening that. up uh, Carl Hall, a, uh, a, a small music venue in Scranton, in, cool. in Wilkes-Barre, and it's uh, downstairs in, in a in a basement. And he's got a whole blank wall. I think he took a picture of it the other day, and he, he said he's looking for artists. So so maybe you can uh, do something that, with that. And our my goal right now is uh, right now it's just a, a source like uh, here contact me. This right. Uh, we're actually going to be building a website real soon mm-hmm. that is going to hopefully simplify this whole process into one thing. Okay. If you have a wall, you could submit your picture to the wall, then um, and its location. Uh, then what we can do is uh, try to connect the appropriate artists for that wall mm. um, based on maybe some things that you want. And then we actually then put a price on it and try to negotiate something that's fair for the artist, mm. excuse me, and fair for the building owner. Uh, and that's like, by simplifying that process, we can actually get a lot more done. Mm. Uh, right now, the process of, of getting walls yeah, contact me, and then I try. <laughs> I gotta go to this location, <laughs> right? And that, right. And that designs is a, is a interior design business and a house painting business. Okay. Um, uh, right as I start becoming a school teacher, I needed to make more money, and I worked as a house painter my whole uh, uh, life for my father. Mm. So I started house painting business up here at the same time I got hired as school teacher. Okay. The house painting business is now seven years old. And uh, if you've been on in uh, Green Ridge on North Washington Ave, when you drive right from Green Ridge towards Marywood or towards downtown, I, I paint like 12 of those homes. Hmm. Uh, all those big homes. Monsters. So there's your resume. I got, I, 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 I got, I got, a, I got in with some re- really great families. They, they really trusted in my skill and my belief in, um, and my uh, painting skills. And I run for my Nat Designs painting company, anywhere between um, uh, two guys to six guys during the summer. Mm. Uh, and we really get a lot of work done. And I'm trying to slowly veer away from the house painting and then go into this realm of painting more murals. Uh, and there's these two guys I just saw, Hans and Han. They are two Belgium artists. They've been in Philly for a while. They did a big mural project in South, South Philly or Fishtown. And um, they're they're really awesome. They're like house painters, but then they just put patterns all over the buildings, and it's like <laughs> really cool. Um, and like from that house painting background, I have the ability to estimate a project, uh, know how to set up a timeline, and then get everybody involved to to get the project done. And that that's not the easiest thing to. Um, or it's not easy to just start up and do that. So sure. a lot of experience in my back end where I, I've lost my shirt on a job or two because I underbid it or there was a couple of jobs that helped me out. Um, so just trying to, uh, uh, taking that background and putting it into this, I think just works so much better. And uh, my wife is the interior designer and she's the one who designs a lot of our escape rooms. The, the I was look thinking and everything. Like that probably goes really well with the escape business. Yeah, and she does a great job. She does. <laughs> it's like a, it's probably really cool in there. She does a great job. Oh, we just decorated for Christmas, and it looks awesome. She came up with this new idea, and it just looks real cool in the front. We hope to win the decorating contest. This year. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, with the interior design, she actually does a lot of freelance stuff on the side. Uh, so, like once, a, sometimes we are completely busy, and just see yourself see each other for like an hour or two and other days we we get a lot of time yesterday was the first time i was off in two weeks so that was kind of a really nice day yesterday got got playing call of duty world war ii and had some fun um but it's really it's really um i've been finding uh it more difficult to find time for us and ourselves as opposed to putting time into all these ventures and i really want to keep this energy going but to keep this energy going, we got to get more more people involved that have the same energy or the same want for the same project. So we're we're trying to figure out who else can be involved. 
who wants to put in time. And we ha actually had a, a mural arts meeting two weeks ago in November. And we had 45 people attend this meeting on a, a Thursday evening. And it was the people were from Tunkhannock to Moscow. And I think that really showed us a need. And now that gave us energy to want to keep pushing this. Now we're just trying to figure out the best way to approach it, whether we have to form a nonprofit or if we run it under Nat Designs as a for-profit. Mm -hmm. There's there's goods and bads to both, and understanding uh, what's good and bad will help us set up a, 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 a perpetual project for the future, something that can be maintained over a long time. Um, and I think that's where we need to, that's where everybody in this whole Northeast PA community needs to be thinking is how we maintain the good things we have now and keep going forward and not letting us slide behind uh, at all again. So it's, it's, it's a, everybody's in this together and everybody has to come out together and, and everybody can have a big party when we get all these murals done. That would be cool. Mm -hmm. And you know all the music, so we need to talk That's about absolutely. getting like a huge band fest or something outside yeah, for I would, murals. I would love to, I'd love to do that. I, I've, I've been actually, I've been talking for a while about doing a festival of some sort. So I think it would be really cool to, to get together with everybody and have, you know, I think people too, still think in terms of a music festival or a, a food festival or whatever should have a, a whole bunch of different things together. Yeah. It would be like, more fun. what I want to do is a blitz of the city. So all these murals are done in like two, three weeks. Mm. And then at the end of the murals, there's a big party. And maybe okay. there's a band playing at each mural. And everybody get, people get invited to it. There's a map. And you just go out and walk. Enjoy yeah. a city, city, go listen to cool music, and go see the murals. That'd be awesome. Uh, uh, that, be that's, awesome. That, it, would be, it would be really cool. And, uh, it's very... Very doable. That's what I, I think it would be a really. And then it just goes away for a while. And then maybe we do another blitz next year. Mm -hmm. As opposed to trying to think of this project where we do one wall, one wall, one wall. Mm -hmm. right, that, that's right. just, that's too, too much. We just need to go all at it, all in, one shot, and that's it. And I think that's, that's the way uh, I think it could be manageable and doable very easily. So that's, a, that's the cool thing. Richmond Mural Project is a. A, a good one to take a look at and they do like a blitz of the city and have a big party at the end so i've been looking at them a lot and they have they have some awesome artists doing artwork down there they have international national local all in the same realm which is really cool so so if you have any uh contacts or insight or anything like that uh get in contact with this this gentleman here what's the best way to get in contact uh there's a, that's a, a funny question. Uh, I'm going to give you our email for Electric City Escape. That's probably one of the best ways to get a hold of us. Our email is mail, M-A-I-L, at electriccityescape.com. Um, and then uh, you can like us on there. Uh, message me on Facebook. Yeah, I'm easy to find, Ryan Nat, H-N-A-T. Um, and then um, we hope to have the website done by end of January. And when we launch that, we hope to do a big uh, uh, a launch night or something like that cool. to try and get people to start going there and then be an easy way. And what we want to do is we want to have an area for the artists, an area for the wall owners, and then uh, someplace where people can donate to. And then we could start raising these funds for the various walls we want to tackle. And then we'll see what happens. Awesome. Well, thank you so much uh, for, for tuning in tonight, uh, and uh, we will uh, we'll see you next week, uh, same time, uh, Wednesday from, uh, from 7 to 8.